Welcome to Modern Latin America in 15 Minutes. My name is Dr. Kim Richardson and today we are going to discuss reform in Latin America. Your last lecture, Lecture 9, we discussed reform just in Mexico, La Reforma in Mexico, uh, culminating in the conquest of Mexico by the French, the second French intervention or invasion of Mexico and the second empire of Mexico. Today what we're going to talk about is reform throughout Latin America in general. So hopefully this is a very general description, hopefully it will ma make sense. Remember that we've been talking again in general, generalities, the 1820s to the 1830s, the liberals generally were in power. In 1830s, such as 1833 in the case of Mexico, the slowly you have throughout Latin America uh, the conservatives taking over. Oftentimes, but not solely, but oftentimes those conservatives are what we discussed also, Caldeos in Lecture 8. Uh, and what they're going to do is try to reimpose authority and stability. And so a lot of people are going to really give support to the Caldeos, such as Rafael Carrera in the case of Guatemala. In the 1860s, 1850s, 1860s, uh, such as 1854, in Mexico, then you're going to have liberals coming back into power. See, but the question is, okay, so 1830s to 1850s, conservatives tend to dominate, but now, uh, as you transition to the liberals, it's going to cause civil war in a lot of places. Not every place, but a lot of civil wars, and even when they're not civil wars, there's some sort of wars, as we can see with the example of Central America with the William Walker uh, example. So 1858 to 63, for example, civil war in Venezuela. 54 to 63, civil war in Colombia. 58 to 61, civil war in Mexico. You got these civil wars going on. And as a whole, the result is going to be liberal dominance. Okay, so we got the liberals coming back to power, this period of liberals. What do the liberals stand for? Remember, they stand for anti-clericalism, they stand for getting rid of the fuero, they stand for what they want is the same law applies to everybody, equality. Of course, sometimes in doing so, we have to question how liberal were the liberals. Right? And that becomes a very uh, important question. And if you look at this picture here, Benito Juarez, he is the archetypical liberal. And we're going to come back to say how liberal was Benito Juarez. Was he as liberal as people later say, or was he not that liberal? Here's a great thing that we have to say. Uh, um, Isabel Allende wrote a book that I really like, The House of the Spirits. And in this, uh, there's a great depiction of what happens there in which you have at this period the uh, this is it's a little bit later period but at, what you have is the uh, either the conservatives or the liberals as landowners with their masses their peasants working for them and then they bring their peasants to uh, vote for them right that's why it takes so many uh, uh, civil wars in order to change this system that's why when you say the liberals are in power, you say, well, how liberal were they? Okay, let's see what this is. The patrones, the bosses, through them a big party with empanadas and lots of wine, barbecued a few cows, especially slaughtered for the occasion, serenaded them with songs accompanied on the guitar, beat them over the head with a few political harangues, and promised them that if the conservative candidates, in this case, won the election, they would all receive a bonus, but that if he lost, they would all lose their jobs. In addition, they rigged the ballot boxes and bribed the police. At the end of the party, they piled the peasants in wooden carts and hauled them off to vote under careful observation amidst much joking and laughter. So it's a good book because it's a historical fiction. It is fiction, but it's fiction based on history. And so I think it's very interesting to read, and I would most generally suggest, recommend it. Progress. Therefore, the liberals say, what we really need is progress. I don't really care about liberalism as much anymore as progress, that word there. And so they're going to do whatever it takes to make progress. What does progress mean, though? First, it means you have to have an orderly society. So people such as Benito Juarez are going to create their rural police force. Uh, and the whole goal of this is to create order and stability in the countryside. Why? Because you want people, foreigners, to say, oh my goodness, look how peaceful and 
uh, colonies in the countryside, we're going to invest there. Especially invest in railroads. Railroads are going to be the symbol of progress bar none. That's what we're going to want. And here, this railroad here is going to be the one railroad built connecting Fair Cruz to Mexico City. And from then on, you have lots of railroads. There's never going to be as many railroads. There are never going to be as many railroads as, say, North America, the United States. Uh, but it's still going to be super important. One of the progresses, problems as we're going to see when it comes to neocolonialism is that a lot of the railroads are going to be built from the interior to the coast to connect with foreigners. Not to connect the cities together, but to export products. That's why order and progress becomes the two words synonymous, it's called positivism, synonymous with these new reformist liberals of this time. They want order, they want progress. But they stop saying they want liberty and justice and equality for all. That way they want to uh, do this right here. Okay, so now let's say the liberals. The liberals are going to see an influx of people into their ranks, especially in 1848 and beyond. 1848 is the year of revolutions in Europe. You can see all of these little star thingamajigs. Those represent revolutions. They usually take place, uh, they took place here generally, it's all over the place, but generally in Prussia, which is then uh, going to become Germany, and Italy. Now imagine you were participating in one of these liberal revolutions, and you lost. All of these revolutions are going to be uh, crushed eventually, every single one, by the uh, Triple Alliance. Well, one place you could do, uh, uh, move to, is Latin America. And the ABC countries, in particular, are going to be parts of Latin America that's going to see a huge influx of immigrants. Argentina, Brazil, and Chile. Especially Argentina, uh, as uh, you're going to see, uh, not in this lecture, but in a future one. Italians and Germans, for the case of Brazil, for example, but also uh, Portuguese and Spanish for the other, uh, uh, for Argentina and Chile. All right, so they come here. One of the reasons they're going to come here, again, I asked the question, how liberal were the liberals, right? The idea of race becomes super important. All the world is worried right now about the idea of race. The white man's burden is soon to come about and all these issues here. Well, the idea comes that the white race is a good race and the darker races are the bad races, right, for whatever reason. How do you, however, uh, if you're living in uh, Latin America, have a white race if you are not necessarily light-skinned? The answer is like coffee. You get coffee and you put a little bit of milk in it. The more milk you put in it, the lighter it gets. And so they begin to argue that what we need to do is have café con leche, a lightening up of the, the, the race of our country. Later on, they're going to change their mind under La Raza Cosmica, well, people like uh, Jose Vasconcelos. But right now what we're saying is the idea is going to be there that we need to lighten the population. Black into White, another great book by Tom Skidmore here. These are two really great books looking at race and race relations as they attempt to whiten uh, race. Even in the 21st century, the idea of race is still one of those things that many people are afraid to talk about, but is still important in discussing Latin America. Okay, so so far, we say in Latin America we have, with the liberals, the reformists, we have progress. And progress, of course, is order and then things, which is progress, such as railroads. But also, they're going to look to the examples of the United States and Europe, Northern Europe, and say, why are they successful? And their answer is, because they have education. We need to have education as well. So, education becomes a vital concern. If you look here, this is just the case of Mexico, but it is greatly indicative of many places, but not all places, many places in Latin America. I say not all because Uruguay, for example, is already a very uh, urban uh, area, whereas opposed to some of these other places, like Mexico was not very urban. So 1844, not a lot of schools. And 1874, even though technically there's not a lot of schools, there are what, eight and a half thousand schools by now? That's a lot more than what was there in 1844 because of this education impetus by the liberals. Also, school students enrolled naturally is going to go up, right? What is this? Maybe 75,000 all the way up to here, which is 350,000. So you're going to have to see an increase 
in the uh, enrollment. One of the problems that you see though is that the population also increases, right? So even though numerically it's going to get bigger and bigger percentage-wise, doesn't change as much as numerically. All right then, there's many more things that we should talk about when it comes to reform in Latin America, but I don't want to over uh, put too much stuff in a mere 15 minutes. So make sure you review what is it that takes place. The liberals are coming to power in the second half of the 19th century. In most places, with the exception of Central America, which I did not talk about, but they have filibusters which are going to discredit the liberals and lead to a pushing back of those dates. That's why the dates are very fluid. You're going to see order and progress be the key idea of the liberals. Education becomes a key idea, but also associated with those three things, uh, dependence on export agriculture and importing ideas from Europe, right? You're going to wear clothes from Paris and you're going to uh, try to look like somebody from London and you're going to try to visit there and know what's going on. All right, that's modern Latin America, reform in Latin America in 15 minutes.